I think I've made the same intro for like the past three videos where I look at like the date and the time and like how close FIFA 22 is and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna do that this time because I've made it so many times and I've waited long enough. I just want FIFA 22. I think the wait for FIFA 22 has been the longest wait for a FIFA I've ever had and it's genuinely starting to piss me off right now. And that's the intro. Yeah, we're just gonna, we're just gonna move on. We're just gonna move on to these teams. All right, all right. What is up guys, it is DMG here, and today we are going to be looking at some squad builds, but specifically, we are going to be looking at the most important thing when we are building starter squads in FIFA, and that is versatility. I'm going to put it like right here in bright letters just so you guys can see it and remember it. Versa, actually, I don't really know how to edit that very well, so I'll probably just do like an aerial font, like kind of just like very simple. Is that funny or sad? Probably both. But yes, versatility is without a doubt the most important thing when you are at least starting to make your squads in FIFA because versatility is going to allow you to try out multiple different tactics and formations without having to buy certain players very often. And then that way you can just try to enjoy the game and try to actually just figure out the game in general and then, you know, change things when you need to. The other thing that we're going to touch upon is the value of players, the true value of players, because there are times where people will be buying players from the Premier League, for example, when they could go and buy someone from the Russian League or the Belgian League for literally the exact same card, but for a fraction of the price. That way you're not getting your ass swindled within the first few weeks of FIFA. And so again, it's not just about finding the best players possible, because I'm sure as much as we would all like to have Messi, Neymar, and Mbappe in the first week, we're not going to be able to afford them, unless you're putting in like 50 grand which i mean you know like you do you but at the same time like why so again it's not important to find the best players it's important to find the best value players because again we're all gonna have a pretty tight budget for the first few weeks so first things first we are gonna start with the low tier team and this is what we have we have a hybrid here featuring players from the bundesliga the Serie A, and the premier league now this i'm putting as a low tier option because while it does have some obviously very good players it's going to have some very expensive players in here you obviously have the expensive players like Teo Hernandez. I think someone like Jude Bellingham is going to be expensive because he's going from a silver to a very usable gold card. He's still very young, he's very popular, and he plays in a good league, and he can link other English players in the Premier League. Along with that, they feature some very good transfer players like Malin, and it also features some Premier League players, and as we all know, Premier League players are going to be extortionately higher priced than their very similar counterparts in literally any other league. Now, this is a good team. I'm not disputing that because because you do have players in here like, again, Malin, Teo Hernandez, Tamori, Jude Bellingham, right? Rodrigo, James, they're all good players. Malin here, for example, is going to be very good. However, you could find very similar alternatives in other leagues. For example, you're going to have Joseph Martinez from Atlanta United. That's going to have a pretty similar card to Malin. Now, are the links going to be better? Obviously not. Malin plays in the Bundesliga and he has a better nationality. However, that does not mean that Joseph Martinez from Atlanta United is going to be bad. In fact, like, I said he's going to be very very similar to Malin and because of that kind of difference in league that there isn't a new transfer involved Joseph Martinez is going to be at a fraction of the price for a very very similar card now the other thing we want to talk about is versatility which is like I said very very underrated especially when you're trying out a new team because versatility is going to allow you to try out new formations new tactics and if you have a squad that features players that can only play one position you're not going to be able to switch them around in game very often if at all for example here you have daniel james who's obviously very fast he's a very very good winger especially starting out because of that pace but he can't really play anywhere else he's not good enough at shooting to play striker his passing is not good enough to play center attacking mid and beyond maybe like a right mid or a right wing he's not gonna be able to play anything other than a wing along with that you have players like calvin phillips and jude bellingham who are gonna be more defensive minded yes jude bellingham can dribble and he can go forward at least decently well however be his shooting isn't that great his passing isn't that great and calvin phillips is kind of the same way his passing and the shooting are good are not good enough to actually be moving forward into that attacking midfield third or just the final third of the entire pitch and so that means both of them are not going to be very good in the attack so that means that they're going to be both center mids that stay back or even potentially defensive mids they're not going to be anywhere like the center attacking mid or a center mid that goes forward and when you have those types of players that are really only 
good in one particular spot, again, that means that you're not going to be able to try out a lot of different formations, which means that you could miss out on, you know, finding either the new meta or finding a formation that you're just genuinely really, really good at. You really want to find those versatile players so that you can switch things around and you don't have to be going and buying new players every five games to try out a very slightly different formation. Now, the high tier team that we are going to be looking at is this one right here. Now, I can tell you immediately that, yes, this is going to be more expensive than the other one. However, more expensive does not mean it is going to be overpriced. In fact, I would say that this team in general is actually going to be a better value for your coins than the first team that we saw. The first thing is because, yes, it just has better players overall in multiple different areas, but two is because you can play different formations in this team. Not only can you go from a four at the back, but you can switch to a five at the back or even three at the back if you really wanted to. You have players in the attack that can play striker. You can put them on the wing with the pace boost. You can put them in center attacking mid. You have midfielders that can play defensive mid or center mid or, you know, a center mid that goes forward. You have left and right backs that can play in multiple different areas as well. The only players that are not versatile are going to be your two center backs, and that's because they are going to be playing center back. So let's take a look at the two strikers. You have Joaquin Correa and you have Angel Correa, right? These two guys have very similar cards. However, one of them is just obviously going to be a better striker, and that's Angel Correa. The other Correa, Joaquin Correa, can play on the wing with decent enough pace and good dribbling. He can play striker or false nine striker. He can play center attacking mid. You have some very good options for him. And then you also have Mateus Cunha that can do a very similar thing to Correa. You can play him on the wing. You can play him at striker. You can play him at center attacking mid with the right chem style, right? So you have three players that can play striker, center attacking mid. You got wing on them, right? As long as you do, you know, the right tactics or instructions or you do the right chem style, you can play them in a plethora of different areas. You also have the midfield with the Paul, Jetson Fernandez, and Barella that are all going to be playing in multiple different areas. Barella has medium high work rates at least according to uh, the previous FIFA and he has good defending. He can play defensive mid. Jetson Fernandez has I believe high high work rates from last FIFA. He can play left and right mid if you really want him to. He can be a box to box center mid. You have DePaul who is going to be going forward because his passing, his shooting, his pace, his dribbling is quite good but his defending is also capable so he can be a holding mid if you really want him to or even a defensive mid that goes forward. Then you have Renan Lodi at left back who's obviously just a very good left back with all around good stats but he also has pretty decent shooting as well so you can play him at left wing back or even left mid if you wanted to. Then you have Dumfries over here that obviously has very good physical he's I think 6'2 he has decent enough pace and defending so he could obviously play right back but he could also easily play center back for you. Honestly this team is going to be one that I really want to build because not only can you play a 4-3-1-2 like this you can play a 4 triple 2 you can play a 4-1-2-1-2 narrow you could play a 4-4-2 you could play a 3-5-2 that's the thing and you have players that can play in multiple different areas and so while yes it is going to be more expensive because they play in better leagues and they have obviously better stats overall they can also play in multiple different areas so it's going to be a better value for your coins and so again that's what i really wanted to touch upon is the fact that you could build a very very good all-around team that can essentially play in any formation that you want them to but you just have to really make sure that you're finding the right players when you're doing that and make sure not to be swindled by buying players from very expensive leagues when you can buy very similar counterparts in cheaper leagues now you're probably not going to have to worry about this after the first few months of fifa because you're going to understand what formations and tactics that you like along with the types of players you like but in the first few months of fifa first month especially it's important to get these types of players so then you can try different formations and different tactics so that is going to do it for this video guys hopefully you did enjoy it if you do have any questions let me know and i'll try to answer them for you but like i said that is going to be it thank you guys so much for watching this has been dmg peace